The former Indian Affairs Minister Jane Stewart made a statement of regret. Up until that time, I hardly had even cared about responding to my residential school experience. And her apology was so lacking an apology. It didn't say, I'm sorry. I, I, I got really angry. I came to Vancouver uh, to um, a First Nations summit meeting. I got up and said some things, expressed my anger and rage and frustration, and said we ought to do something. They had a project called the Indian Residential School Survivors Project. They said, oh, we want you to come to Vancouver and run this project. <laughs> so I came. And of course, it had a different perspective than vengeance or anger, per se. It had a perspective around healing. I met hundreds of survivors all around province, across, across the country, and everywhere we uh, met, uh, survivors recognized that there was suddenly a real importance in beginning to tell our story. But more importantly, that there was an emerging sense that we had to heal from this past. That was so clear, so evident in all of the processes that we were pushing forward. And, and slowly, the uh, discussion uh, turned to reconciliation. The real profound shift for me was in being part of a national dialogue. There were seven national dialogues across the country. There are usually 100, 120 people, I think, and some of them. And they involved the church, uh, survivors like myself, Aboriginal organizations, government people. And we were starting to wrestle with this huge issue about what to do in response to the legacy of residential schools. The court cases were mounting. There was an estimation that if all of the cases that were coming forward were to go through the courts, it would take us 50 years to, for the courts to settle all this issue. And we began to recognize we don't have that time. And so these national dialogues, as we moved across the country, I could see that the tone of the discussions and the attitudes of people between each other started to shift and people are actually beginning to talk to each other rather than screaming each other at each other or pounding tables. We began to listen to each other, and we began to think, well, maybe, maybe there are some other ways to resolve this terrible legacy. He said to me, Karen, I really want this walk to happen. No matter what happens to me, can, can you and a few of your friends uh, do something to make sure that this happens? So I sort of started putting the walk into that framework about being that transformational experience. I didn't just see it as a, as a walk. I, I saw it as his life's work. I was so convinced that a big walk could and would demonstrate to all Canadians, and people around the globe who will hear about it, that we can walk together in some way differently than we have before that there are enough people around, enough like-minded people, good people, who want to see things change as they are. That's what we were trying to create was an image, a vision, that would convince others that many, many people care and are able to come in spite of the weather, whatever the weather condition is. People are caring enough to come and walk together uh, f on this day in the name of reconciliation, I realized that history was in the making in that moment right there. The walk was just a portal to the action. Where we see Reconciliation Canada going is starting those dialogues across the country, uh, moving forward to create some really strong action around it because reconciliation can't just be about a feel-good experience. It has to catalyze some kind of meaningful change within society. And so what are our responsibilities to make sure that those actions take place? And, and how do we make sure that we create a society that is more able to accommodate that vision. I know that there are enough of us, including Simon Fraser and other institutions, who care and other like-minded people all together thinking about how we can continue to do this. I think we can here develop a society that's going to have the collective will to give description to itself that is collaborative and inclusive and equal and just. We've got to stay the course and we've got to promote this idea that 
We are one. Namuyut. We are one. We act as one to ensure that our children and our grandchildren are able to achieve their optimum potential. That we're doing what's in the best interest of all. And, and that's essentially what Namuyut means. That's what reconciliation means to us.